When it comes to weight loss, the sheer number of methods can feel like following a thousand different recipes for the same dish. Just like cooking, one recipe may be perfect for one person, while another prefers a different approach. Yet no matter which method you choose, the goal remains the same. Weight loss. While well, most weight loss strategies focus on what and how much to eat, a new question has emerged. When should you eat? You are free to eat. Enter intermittent fasting, the buzzwordy approach everyone's talking about. This method shifts the focus from the content of your meals to the timing. But here's the big question. Is intermittent fasting the ultimate weight loss hack or just a fancy way of skipping breakfast? Hello, my dears, and welcome. I'm Marina, your registered dietitian, here to guide you through your weight loss journey. I've been in your shoes. I lost 80 pounds myself, so I understand how overwhelming it can feel with so many strategies out there. Today, we are diving into one of the hottest topics, intermittent fasting. We'll break down why it's become so popular, what it actually is, whether it truly works for weight loss and if it's better than standard dieting. We'll also cover who should avoid it and how to start it effectively if you want to try it. Plus, is there a best way to do it? Intermittent fasting has gained popularity as a seemingly straightforward weight loss strategy because it shifts the focus from what and how much you eat to when you eat. Many people like this approach because it provides more flexibility in their food choices since there's no need to cut out entire food groups or count every single calorie. Instead, the focus is on limiting your eating to a certain time window. For a lot of people, it's easier to limit the hours they eat than to constantly think about portion sizes or the calorie content of each meal. Some people find it hard to stick to the old school five small meals a day recommendation, especially if they have a bigger appetite or simply enjoy having larger meals. Rather than nibbling on a handful of almonds at 10 a.m., they prefer to skip the snacks and have a heartier lunch or dinner. This simplicity, combined with the potential for better appetite control, because, let's face it, we are not all great at stopping after just one cookie, makes intermittent fasting appealing to many. Additionally, there are claims of other potential health benefits intermittent fasting offers, but we'll get to that later. Because apparently it's a cure for everything. So, what exactly is intermittent fasting? The term intermittent fasting refers to various meal timing schedules that cycle between periods of eating and fasting. It's not a traditional diet where certain foods are off limits, but more of an eating pattern that focuses on when you eat rather than specific foods or nutrients. There are several different methods of intermittent fasting, but they all involve fasting periods that are longer than the typical 8 to 12 hour overnight fast. The three most common regimens are Alternate day fasting, where you eat normally one day and then either fast or eat very few calories the next. The second is 5-2 intermittent fasting, where you eat normally for 5 days a week and either fast or eat very little for 2 days. Lastly, there is daily time-restricted eating, with the 16-8 method being the most popular among that due to its simplicity and lower challenge, so we'll focus on that one. Whenever I mention intermittent fasting from here on out, I'm specifically referring to the restricted eating with 168 method, which we will discuss next. But please let me know in the comments if you are interested in other types of fasting so we can always deliver, my dears. The 168 method is one of the most popular time restricted eating protocols, encouraging you to eat all your meals within an 8 hour window, say from 11 am to 7 pm, and fast for the remaining 16 hours, which includes overnight and the morning. By shortening the eating window, people may naturally skip meals or snacks, resulting in a spontaneous reduction in a calorie intake without consciously cutting out foods or counting calories. 
but this reduction in calories hinges on the idea that people don't completely make up for the calories they miss during the fasting periods when they start eating again. In other words, one shouldn't overeat during their eating window. Zuckerberg ate everything in our freezer. For some, this approach simplifies calorie control and makes it easier to reduce daily calories. Research indicates that limiting the eating window can result in a spontaneous calorie reduction of 10 to 25% from baseline, helping with weight management. Recent reviews support that and suggest that intermittent fasting could benefit patients with obesity and yield effects comparable to regular daily calorie restriction. However, this spontaneous calorie reduction while intermittent fasting isn't guaranteed for everyone. Simply restricting your eating window doesn't automatically lead to weight loss if you compensate by overeating or choosing calorie-dense, low-nutrient foods during your eating window. Research reveals a nuanced picture, especially among individuals prone to binge eating or those struggling with hunger regulation. Some people may eat even more than usual, especially if they feel deprived from fasting, leading to overeating during feeding periods. This compensation can undermine any potential calorie deficit created by the fasting period. Calories, 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 calories. Moreover, a lot of times people choose so-called late-time restricted eating where they skip breakfast and the majority of the food intake is between noon and evenings. But evening hours are known for being particularly high-risk time for overeating, especially for those who experience stress or emotional eating triggers. <laughs> Fool, yeah. Come on, let's go drink till we can't feel feelings anymore. We will explore best intermittent fasting schedules a bit later, so stick around. But here's the important part. Intermittent fasting is not a magical solution. It's a tool that helps manage calorie intake, which may lead to weight loss over time. But it's still essential to focus on eating balanced, nutrient-rich meals, as what you eat and how much you eat still matters in the overall health equation. Think of it as managing a calorie budget. Just like you wouldn't spend your paycheck recklessly, you don't want to waste the majority of your calorie budget on junk food. Instead, it's wiser to invest in nutrient-dense foods like protein and fiber, which promote satiety, help maintain muscle mass, and provide essential nutrients. Assuming you can eat whatever you want just because your eating window is shorter is a recipe for frustration if weight loss and overall health is your ultimate goal. Homie, have you been cheating on your diet? Let's put things into perspective with this example. A sedentary older woman who needs around 1,500 calories daily for weight loss could easily exceed this limit if she indulges in two large meals and a dessert within her eating window, even without snacking. While she might avoid weight gain from skipped meals, true weight loss requires a calorie deficit. So without careful attention to portion sizes and food quality, intermittent fasting may not yield the desired results. I've been on a diet since 1992. Many individuals who adopt intermittent fasting and have success with weight loss tend to become more mindful of their overall dietary habits. It's important to note that it's not the fasting itself that matters for weight loss, but the mindfulness and lifestyle changes that accompany it and a calorie deficit. Die, calories, die! So yes, intermittent fasting can be effective for weight loss, mainly because it helps reduce calorie intake. But again, it's just one tool for managing energy intake and it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. And it's definitely not a free pass to smash burgers and fries every night. Don't be sad now, my dear. Hitting that subscribe button will make at least one of us a little happier. Now here's the big question. Is intermittent fasting better than traditional calorie restriction? The evidence suggests not really. 
Most studies indicate that intermittent fasting does not lead to a greater weight loss than standard dieting with continuous calorie restriction. For instance, most recent randomized controlled trial assigned participants with obesity to either a time-restricted eating regimen or a usual eating pattern with both groups consuming the same number of calories. The study found no significant differences in weight loss or metabolic outcomes between the two groups, indicating that the weight loss observed was due to the calorie deficit and not meal timing. In other words, Time-restricted eating did not provide additional weight loss or metabolic benefits beyond what was achieved through calorie control alone. Multiple meta-analyses support this conclusion, indicating that intermittent fasting is not a superior strategy to old-school continuous calorie restriction for changes in body fat or other cardiometabolic risk markers in overweight or obese adults. Both approaches can achieve comparable effects in promoting weight loss and metabolic improvements. Now, many proponents of fasting suggest it's a superior option to all others, but keep in mind, simple answers and one-solution problems tend to sell the best, especially when they promise to fix everything. In reality, there is no clear winner for everyone. The best approach is one you can maintain long enough to support your goals. Hey, you have your goals, I have mine. However, there is ongoing debate regarding intermittent fasting's potential metabolic and health benefits beyond weight loss. While some studies do report slightly improved insulin sensitivity with fasting, long-term outcomes do not show superiority over traditional calorie restriction. As one researcher noted, overall, the loss and the extent of that loss in body weight may be more important for improvements in cardiometabolic risk markers than the type of diet used. In other words, Health improvements come from weight loss itself rather than the specific diet regimen or fasting. Additionally, don't get too caught up in the seven wonders of intermittent fasting like autophagy. Let's be real, these benefits are likely just the result of caloric restriction that comes with fasting, not the fasting itself. You can achieve similar outcomes through other methods too. Don't lose sight of the forest for the trees. There! I said it! Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Have you tried intermittent fasting and did it work for you? Let's help each other with sharing our stories in the comments. Okay, but what about appetite? Some claim that intermittent fasting makes them feel less hungry. While this might be true for some individuals, as appetite is highly variable and subjective, research does not consistently support this. A review on appetite and intermittent fasting found that these interventions are not associated with reduced hunger, fullness, or food consumption compared to continuous energy restriction. So probably you will be a bit hungry in both cases, no matter the approach you choose, because calorie deficit. Uh oh, someone is hangry! If you're finding this challenging, check out this video for additional support. Finally, when comparing the two methods, the most critical factor for long-term weight loss success is adherence. Adherence to continuous calorie restriction typically declines within one to four months, so adherence to intermittent fasting regimen could be superior in the early stages. However, that too usually decreases when the duration of intervention reaches 12 weeks or longer. So, we could say that adherence to intermittent fasting is generally similar to or slightly better than traditional calorie restriction in the short term. However, many individuals find it challenging to maintain intermittent fasting over the long term compared to standard dieting methods. For some, it's a miss, and for others, it's a hit. I don't know what to think. We could conclude this comparison with this. While intermittent fasting may not provide superior results compared to traditional dieting, it can still be safe and effective strategy for weight loss when paired with a balanced diet and regular physical activity. 
if you're interested in trying intermittent fasting, the time-restricted 16-8 method is a great place to start. It's less restrictive than other methods and easier to fit into busy lifestyle. To ease into it, you can even begin with a 12-hour eating window like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and gradually shorten it over time, working toward a more focused 8-hour window. Think of it like training for a marathon. You don't start with a sprint. The key is to make intermittent fasting sustainable for you. First, consider when it would be easiest for you to start and stop eating. Are you someone who prefers eating their first meal around noon or do you feel better eating earlier in the day? Think about your work schedule, social commitments and family dynamics. For instance, if dinner is the one time you and your family sit together for a meal, it might not be the best idea to skip it because after all, it's not fun nor healthy to explain to the kids why mommy or daddy is always skipping dinner. Or, if you are hungry in the morning and you like eating breakfast, skip dinner. I understand, I like a good breakfast. But don't forget, oats or eggs can be eaten at any meal, not just breakfast. Next, consider social events. There's no need to be rigid, you can have the occasional break from your regular schedule without guilt, but being mindful of your routine will make it easier for you to stay consistent. Because the easier it is, the more likely you will stick with it in the long run. That's a bitch slap of truth right there. Once you set your eating window, it's time to think about your meals. How many meals do you want to have during your eating window? Do you need to meal prep for work? Maybe pack a few snacks to avoid overeating later. Plan your meals in advance to avoid grabbing something calorie dense in a pinch. Lastly, let's talk about the composition of those meals. Just because you're eating fewer meals doesn't mean you should cut corners with nutrition. You'll need to focus on getting enough protein to preserve muscle mass, especially if your meal frequency is lower. Try to include protein in every meal in larger portions to keep you full and avoid excessive muscle loss. Also, don't forget about fiber from vegetables and fruit, as well as complex carbs and heart-healthy fats like olive oil, avocados, or nuts and seeds. If you want to learn more about how to build a healthy meal for weight loss, please check out this video, because remember, although intermittent fasting emphasizes the timing of your meals, it's still essential to cover all your nutrient bases, especially when you're eating less frequently. Think of each meal as an opportunity to fuel your body, not just your hunger. But before you decide on your fasting and eating window, listen to this next part. But even before that, please do me a favor, give that like button some love and hit subscribe to help us reach first milestone. Moving on. When considering the best schedule for intermittent fasting, timing is crucial for maximizing health benefits. Research suggests that aligning your eating window with your body's natural rhythms, often referred to as your internal clock or circadian rhythm, can enhance fat loss and improve metabolic health. Specifically, morning or early intermittent fasting might be more effective than evening fasting for several compelling reasons. Your body's eternal clock regulates various metabolic processes and tends to be more efficient earlier in the day. Eating earlier allows you to take advantage of peak insulin sensitivity and digestive efficiency, reducing the risk of storing calories as fat. In contrast, eating late at night has been linked to poorer blood sugar control, increased hunger hormones and lower energy expenditure, which can make weight loss more challenging. Several studies support the idea that time-restricted eating with earlier feeding windows, such as eating between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., is associated with better fat metabolism, improved blood glucose regulation, and enhanced cardiovascular health. A recent meta-analysis found significant improvements in metabolic markers like insulin sensitivity and lipid profiles for those who ate earlier compared to those who ate later. 
Additionally, diet quality tends to decline later in the day, while early meals often improve nutrient intake. Late night eating is associated with greater overall energy intake and irregular eating patterns, which can increase the risk of cardiometabolic diseases. Practicing time-restricted eating by consuming meals earlier in the day could also help reduce calorie intake further, minimize snacking, and enforce more regular eating times. So maybe breakfast is indeed the most important meal of the day. I eat success for breakfast! Some research has shown a connection between skipping breakfast and an increased risk of overweight and obesity. The American Heart Association also recommends spreading calorie intake over a defined period, emphasizing early consumption and consistent overnight fasting. In my opinion, though, breakfast isn't necessarily the most important meal of the day. All meals play a crucial role in our overall energy and nutrient intake in the long run. In fact, I'd even argue that meals eaten later in the day, particularly in the evening, deserve more attention regarding health and weight loss. This is often when many of us are at greater risk of overeating or reaching for high sugar, high fat snacks. After a long day at work, when their kids are asleep and your partner is watching football, it's often just you and your ice cream. We don't usually crave those kind of foods for breakfast, right? While eating breakfast alone won't help you lose weight, skipping it, as you've seen, might not either. Topic for another video, but what do you think? Would early intermittent fasting suit you better or do you prefer a later schedule? Are you a team breakfast or team dinner? I play on both teams if it involves food. Also remember, you can break your fast anytime with any food you want. So, intermittent fasting can be effective regardless of timing, but following your natural rhythms by eating earlier may provide additional metabolic and weight loss benefits, but if it fits your schedule. Now, I have to warn you about potential side effects. Many of these are linked to dehydration, especially headaches, so remember to consume at least 1.5 liters of water or other non-caloric beverages each day. Headaches, typically felt in the frontal region, can occur during the initial days of fasting as your body adjusts. Some individuals may also experience lightheadedness, dizziness, or chills due to lower blood pressure or blood sugar levels. Consequently, this can lead to irritability, poor concentration, low energy, or overall fatigue. Surprisingly, bad breath is another reported side effect caused by decreased salivary flow and increased acetone in the breath. And of course, no diet is truly successful without a healthy dose of hunger. Hungry and angry? You hangry, Claire. Nevertheless, these side effects are usually mild and do not significantly deter participants from continuing their fasting regimen. However, if you experience more severe side effects, it's essential to reassess your approach and check in with your doctor or dietitian. But side effects or not, some people should avoid intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting of any kind is not recommended for children and preteens as these are critical periods of rapid growth. For teenagers with obesity, some research suggests that intermittent energy restriction could be integrated into behavioral weight management programs, providing an alternative to traditional caloric restriction and offering more flexibility. However, such programs should be closely supervised by clinicians, especially given that teenagers and young adults are particularly vulnerable to developing disorder eating patterns, which can lead to full-blown EDs, especially among young girls and women. Therefore, for weight management in this demographic, I would personally avoid intermittent fasting and recommend exploring other strategies first. Additionally, individuals with a history of EDs or those in active recovery should also avoid intermittent fasting. Pregnant and lactating women should steer clear of this approach as well. 
People with liver disorders and nutrient deficiencies will also not benefit from intermittent fasting, nor should individuals taking medication for blood pressure or heart disease without consulting a healthcare professional. Also, those who naturally have low blood pressure may be more prone to electrolyte imbalances during fasting and more side effects. Next, Athletes and highly active individuals should exercise caution with intermittent fasting due to their higher energy needs for training and performance, which necessitates careful consideration of sports nutrition. For people with type 1 diabetes or a history of serious hypoglycemic events, intermittent fasting is also not advisable. However, for those with type 2 diabetes, it could be a viable option, but it's crucial to consult a doctor first, particularly if taking medication as hypoglycemic events may occur. Additionally, older adults should approach intermittent fasting with caution, as current research primarily focuses on younger or middle-aged adults. This dietary approach could potentially lead to muscle and bone mass loss, making it important for older adults to maintain adequate protein intake and engage in resistance training. Some may find this challenging, so it's best to be cautious. Lastly, individuals with gastric conditions like acid reflux may also not benefit from intermittent fasting and should instead aim for several smaller, consistently spaced meals throughout the day, particularly avoiding large, heavy meals. We also shouldn't forget about people who need to take medications with food to prevent nausea or stomach irritation. They may also struggle with fasting. I think... We now covered everybody. Extensive. While there are some groups that should avoid intermittent fasting, if you have a weight problem and are otherwise healthy and do not have any of the mentioned conditions, don't knock it until you try it. Just remember, consult with a healthcare provider or a registered dietitian before making any dietary changes. Who knows, maybe in the future, I'll open a worldwide hotline for nutrition consultations. Let me know in the comments if that would be of interest for you. As we wrap up, remember that whether you choose intermittent fasting or any other strategy, the ultimate goal is long-term weight loss success. This journey is about finding the approach that works for you. Intermittent fasting can certainly play a role in your journey if it's a method that resonates with you and fits your lifestyle. But just like any game you play, you have to play it to master it. And I'm rooting for you to win every step of the way. Thank you for watching, my dear. And if you found this information helpful, please give it a thumbs up and join our community of weight loss warriors. And lastly, remember, your success is defined by the choices you make every day, so make those choices count. To make it count. Until next time, bye!